Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I was really hoping that that wasn't true. He is carrying on two separate lives. Would you like to confront him? Yeah. Steven? Hi. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Is this your dead wife? You're nuts. I've Listen to this. Who does that sound like? From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hang me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up, camera. Get up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is, like, not how this is supposed Whatever. to work, Just go. Josh. Go with him. Woo. I love you. I'm so sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hi, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching this presentation of Cheaters. Meet Sandra Matei, a protective mother of three needing to confirm her boyfriend's intentions before taking the relationship to the next level. Wanting to know more about his secretive demeanor, Sandra calls on the detectives at Cheaters. Sandra Matei, age 32. A waitress concerned that her boyfriend may be hiding a secret liaison from her. Stephen and I met at Denny's. I'm a waitress there. Uh, he comes in quite frequently, and over the course of time, we got to know each other. And after that, we started going out after work, bowling, hanging out. His wife passed away, so I guess I was just kind of there for him. The kids aren't involved a whole lot as far as us all getting together. Um, but we've gotten quite serious. He's having a house built for us to move the family in together, I'm trying to get the kids together to get to know each other. And he lives with his parents, but I've never been to his house. So he just comes by my house or we go out after work, and that's when we see each other. I'm not sure that it's tension as much as it is just a little bit of insecurity, just the fact that, you know, the house is the main thing that he's been telling me. And not knowing where he lives, you know, wondering why I don't know where he lives, wondering why he doesn't ever call me from a home phone. If you guys were to catch him cheating, I would feel very hurt and very disappointed. Um, but at the same time, I would be glad that I didn't get involved emotionally deeper. It would be better for my kids and I in the long run that we find out now. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Stephen Redlow, age 28, a salesman who may be pulling a fast one on his girlfriend. Investigation day five. Cheaters investigators find the suspect after several attempts at locating his whereabouts. Complainant Mate has informed detectives that suspect Stephen Redlow lives at home with his parents. But Cheaters successfully tracks him down to another unknown residence. Suspect Redlow emerges from the domicile, followed by a mysterious female carrying a small child. She puts the toddler in the back of the car, and the two take off down the road. They are followed to a nearby mall. After a few hours, the idyllic threesome emerges from the shopping mall and make their way back to the car. Suspect Redlow finally slows down to make a stop at a local fast food joint. Cheaters finds an inconspicuous spot to continue the surveillance. The camera zooms in on what appears to be a wedding ring on the suspect's finger. The female companion sports one as well. 
Cheaters, shocked by the discovery, suspects that both parties may be up to no good. Cheaters investigators adjourn back to headquarters to dissect the evidence. Investigation day seven. He comes out of the same unknown house with his companion, daughter, and loyal canine in tow. Investigators have discovered that his female companion, now identified as Joy Redlow, is actually his current wife. Complainant Matei, however, reported that Redlow's wife was recently deceased. She had consoled him on numerous occasions. Suspect Redlow takes his family to a local park for an enjoyable picnic. They find a nice spot and lay out a blanket. Baffled at the suspect's exceptionally deceptive treatment of Ms. Matei, Cheaters presses on with the investigation. Investigation day 13. Detectives have now confirmed that the residence is indeed leased in his name, clearly disproving his claim of residing with his parents. He takes his pooch outside to give him a scrub down. The suspect also continues his sham with Ms. Matei in a taped phone conversation. Hello? Hey, Steve, what are you doing? Nothing, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm just kind of thinking about everything you've been telling me about the house and everything, and I guess I'm feeling like, how do I know you're telling me the truth? <laughs> You know, I'm telling you the truth. I love you, baby. When we're together, it's like we're one. I'll do anything for you. You know, I'll give you a house, give you a car, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll take care of your children. I love you. All right. Well, are you still coming by in a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. All I'll right. I'll catch you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Complainant Matei is called upon to discuss the heartrending details of the case. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Sandra's concerns regarding Stephen are no longer in question, Cheaters quickly moves to inform her of what is occurring. Strengthened by the welfare of her children, Sandra boldly confronts the unknown results of her case. Sandra, thanks for meeting us out here today. I know you had some questions that initially caused you to come to Cheaters regarding your relationship. He's been telling me that he was um, building a house for my children and I. Mm -hmm and um, that it would be ready soon and you know that he wanted to be a family i've never seen his house or anything sandra the reason we contacted you today our detectives have compiled some information that was very important for you to see are you ready to take a look at that the investigation starts sandra outside of his residence now i know he said He's living with his parents, but that doesn't look like his mother. They hop in the car. They are followed to a local mall. We see him take his daughter out. This woman accompanies him. They are holding hands. If anyone was looking at this on the outside, this would look like it's a happy family. They get back in the car, and we see them arriving at a hamburger place. As we zoom in, the detective noticed on his left hand there's a wedding ring. Now, I don't know if that's something that he continues to wear for respect of his deceased wife. We continue the surveillance and noticed on the woman that she's also wearing a wedding ring. So after spending that time together, they load back in the car and head on back to the house. On this day, we've identified the female and that is his wife. Oh my God. And to her, this might just be a normal day. They load up in the car, bringing the dog with them this time, head out to a local park, and spend time together as a family. I, I kind of had an idea, but I was really hoping that that wasn't true. This day of the investigation, we observed him at his house again. Although on the outside, it looks normal, and it makes me sick. I know that wasn't easy to see. He's sick for saying his wife is dead. Kind of gives you a little bit of a better idea of what kind of person he is, doesn't it? We know where he is. There's a shopping area right back there with a laundromat. And he's with his wife. 
doing clothes at the laundromat. Would you like to confront him? I think so. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and load up in the car. Why don't I get you over in this direction? Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the hell is this? Can you explain to Sandra? What do you mean, who is this? Who is this? I don't understand. No, what? This girl that you've been seeing for six months, Stephen. I don't know what so you, you've about. never spoken with her on the phone? No. Never? No. So we're crazy. You're nuts. So why don't you tell me, is this your dead wife? Oh, this is woman? your dead wife. Yeah, you were dead. Uh, is this your dead wife? I don't know. Any any any. Oh no. Okay, I'm not dead. I'm right here. So we can see that. If, 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 uh, I'm if, married. If, so you're saying you don't know me? No, this? I've Listen never to seen this. Man, how can this you involve my children? Then on the phone with Sandra. Does that sound like his voice? Coming up, the conclusion. is how you show it? Do you love her? Do you love Sandra? What about my kids, man? That's how you do it? Because you don't have to say? You've got to answer not only to her So I have no children, explanation for this? your wife as well, Nothing? yeah. Nothing? Back to there. Go. Now. I'm sorry. You're sorry and that's it? So what am I supposed Whatever. to tell my kids? Tell them what you want. That you're I, I, sorry? My wife. I'm going home with my so you want me to tell really him that you have, you have a wife, that's what you want me to tell him, Stephen? Stephen, you want me to tell him you have a wife? Stephen, you want me to tell him you have a wife, have a wife? Have a wife right. and that's it? You're right, you do have to work him out with your wife, but there's another relationship and more that children is done. and their children I don't involved. Care. The whatever is over, whatever relationship is over, you whatever whatever relationship is over oh you've God. got a responsibility. I don't care. You didn't know he was married? Come on, let's go. You got my keys. that your husband was for six months. That's what's insane. You know what? You should have known he was married. How would I know when he said you were dead? Have you been to his house? Have you been he's, to his house? No, he met my he, children. Have you been to his house? He have you done anything? And have you seen me? Where do you guys go together? I mean, what, do you we go, go everywhere together. What do you do with him? We're married. We have a daughter. We live together. I see well, him every I, Well, he's not too happy or he wouldn't have been me for six months. Let's go on. So you're just going to run? Does that look like the guy that you met six months ago? Nothing like him. He would have never said he didn't know me. After the confrontation, Sandra sets her emotions aside to deal effectively with the confusing events. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals what her future holds. But now, Cheaters converses with Rodney Warneau, an industrious gentleman who feels the trouble caused by his affair was simply a misunderstanding in his relationship. 
Rodney Warneau, age 28. Rodney talks to cheaters about his embarrassment over his confrontation. The night of the confrontation, when she was yelling and screaming and so high strung, you know, I understand she was upset and she had every right to be. I mean, it was embarrassing, you know, around a lot of people. I, I definitely don't like my, my dirty laundry being aired out in public, especially on TV. Hey, you lost your mind, huh? With cheaters. Huh? Hey, is your mind. Right? What is wrong with you? What Rodney? is wrong with you? Is this Hold right? on, what you talking about? With, is this, you know what it is, you walking around with something and what? you ain't got nothing to say? You telling me you out with your boy? Actually, my relationship with Jennifer was, I thought that I could really do what I wanted to do because we had talked about it and discussed it and uh, we had actually agreed, both agreed not to uh, be together and you know we needed some time apart so I actually thought I could do what I wanted to do that's why I cheated over that's what you're saying but we can talk about this hey, dog. talk about it cameras out my them cameras you, too, you worried about you right about the wrong because you better be worried about me and don't be looking at me like that I don't care baby I love you you around with some other in the world and there ain't around for you nah, but had it been me after some you know, you would've, you would've acted a fool, though. I'd say the difference between Jennifer and Tiffany is Jennifer was definitely a real woman I could sit down, have a conversation with, and never would have a, a real grown-up discussion, and Tiffany was just a, pretty much a, a, a piece. Young 18, hot, I mean, who wouldn't? You better be worried about me. No, I ain't no Baby, I love you, let's go. No, you weren't worried about that. You go and pick the up taking the home, doing this for the hell. I can't even get a movie. You taking the blockbuster to get movies. All I want to do is sit at sit at home and snuggle. You don't want to do that though. That's yeah, too much like right. I do. You you lying? Let's go snuggle. Man. No, no. You I've been doing that when you was with this woman. Actually, it was it was the worst night of my life because we, I mean, we rode back with uh Mr. Greco and the crew, and I thought that our relationship was on the way of being back to normal or getting back to where it was, but I was wrong. She uh, doesn't trust me anymore, and I can't blame her. Look, 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 do you want to talk to him about this? Yeah. We'll give him a ride back to your car. OK. Are you going to be all right? Mm -hmm. OK. Stay here and let me go talk to him. All right. Rodney, she's OK with us giving you a ride back to her car. She'll drop you off. Yeah, but listen, but listen OK, me. we'll go in the car and talk, but listen. We're not going to let this get out of hand, OK? All right. In the future, I plan to, I, I plan to move on. It's going to be real hard to move on without her, because, I mean, we've been together so long. You know? I plan to um, pick myself up and continue to work and continue to support myself and just move on. It's going to be painful, like I said, but I got to move on. Now that the confrontation is over, Sandra Matei confirms that she feels liberated from her tainted relationship, but mentally shaken up by the unfortunate events. Sandra admits that she's dumbfounded by the manner in which she was treated by Mr. Redlow. Ms. Matei is, however, happy that the truth has come out and looks forward to moving on with her life. Stephen Redlow wants to extend an apology to Ms. Matei for his dishonesty. He claims that he's not such a bad guy after all, Redlow says that he fell head over heels for Sandra when they first met, and without thinking, blurted out that his wife had recently passed away. He admits it was a manipulative thing to say, but says she just sucked him in with her enigmatic beauty. Mr. Redlow affirmed that he did not want to jeopardize his marriage and shows remorse for lying to both women. He hopes his wife will forgive him for his behavior and looks forward to a fruitful life with his family. As for her part, Joy Redlow states that her husband is probably just going through a phase and will hopefully return to his senses. Joy says she'll consider giving him another chance if he agrees to attend family counseling. She declares that Stephen has a problem with loyalty, and she says she'll file for divorce if he ever cheats again.